We're all generally aware of the more modern examples of virtual reality and immersive technology being used in works of fiction in titles like Ready Player One, The Matrix and The Lawnmower Man. But what is the first example of something akin to VR being mentioned in fiction? The Man Who Awoke is a series of short stories by Lawrence Manning that were originally published in Wonder Stories magazine in 1933. It tells a science fiction tale of a man who puts himself into a state of suspended animation, waking every 5,000 years to see the progress of humanity. In the year 15,000 AD, the book describes how people are able to place themselves in eternal dreams, having their senses manipulated to sleep their lives away in scenarios of their own choosing. This is certainly something akin to virtual reality, but it doesn't quite replicate our current modern experience of the concept of VR in 2021. However, in 1935, science fiction writer Stanley G. Weinbaum published a short story called Pygmalion Spectacles. In it, we get something much closer to modern day virtual reality. I've recently read this short story and wanted to give a brief overview of the plot and how the author envisioned the concept of VR all those years ago. There will be spoilers in this video, but the story is very short if you'd like to read it before watching. I'll put a link in the description, but with that, let's take a look. Immersed Robot But what is reality? That's the line that Pygmalion Spectacles opens with, and it sets the scene immediately. All is dream, all is illusion, I am your vision as you are mine. The opening of the story introduces us to Dan Burke, a slightly tipsy partygoer in New York who leaves and stumbles across an elfin man by the name of Albert Ludwig, or Professor Ludwig. Professor Ludwig goes on to describe how he has created an invention that makes dreams reality. He describes it as a movie that doesn't just give you sight and sound, but also smell, taste and touch. And instead of being on the screen, the movie is all around you. Then he says that you're also able to manipulate and interact with the characters themselves within this movie, or dream as he describes it. Interested, Dan returns with Ludwig to his hotel room, where the professor produces a pair of magical spectacles, which he fills with his specially designed liquid solution. Dan places the spectacles on his head and is immediately transported to a utopian, alternate reality, while still being able to feel, for the time being, the chair he is sitting in within Ludwig's hotel room. From here, the story describes the new reality and further revelations take place. I won't go too in-depth with all aspects of the plot, but the interesting aspect of this story is how closely it highlights what modern-day VR is trying to reproduce. Dan is initially completely taken in by the new place he finds himself in, but then tries to bring his mind back to actual reality as shown here. Eden, he muttered, and the swelling music of unseen voices answered. Some measure of reason returned. Illusion, he told himself. Clever optical devices, not reality. He groped for the chair's arm, found it, and clung to it. He scraped his feet and found again an inconsistency. To his eyes, the ground was mossy verdure. To his touch, it was merely a thin hotel carpet. He also plays a role in this interactive movie, initially being unable to control his own words as he speaks to what are ostensibly NPCs. He opened his lips to speak, but a strained, excited voice sounded in his ears. Who are you? Had he spoken? The voice had come as if from another, like the sound of one's words in a fever. But then, like the name input part of a modern day RPG, he is asked for his name and is suddenly able to reply. Dan, he muttered, his voice sounding oddly different. After a while, Dan's sense of touch seems to submit to the simulation, and he finds himself able to feel things as if actually there, while also still occasionally able to return to sensing the chair he's actually sitting in. Dan touched her extended hand, feeling without any surprise the living warmth of her fingers. He had forgotten the paradoxes of illusion. This was no longer illusion to him, but reality itself. It seemed to him that he followed her, walking over the shadowed turf that gave with springy crunch beneath his tread, though Galatea left hardly an imprint. He glanced down, noting that he himself wore a silver garment and that his feet were bare. With the glance he felt a feathery breeze on his body and a sense of mossy earth on his feet. The longer Dan experiences this simulated and interactive dream, the more he seems to become enveloped within it. He goes on long walks, along streams, through incredible forests and sees unbelievable vistas, becoming completely absorbed by this reality. 
Then, after a while longer, he seems to become confused between one reality and another as the story draws to a conclusion. It vanished, but the trees writhed and the sky darkened, and he swayed dizzily in turmoil. He realised suddenly that he was no longer standing, but sitting in the midst of the crazy glade, and his hands clutched something smooth and hard, the arms of that miserable hotel chair. He struggled to his knees. Walls, Ludwig's room, encompassed him. He must have slipped from the chair. The magic spectacles lay before him, one lens splintered and spilling a fluid no longer water clear, but white as milk. Confusion seems to follow Dan for a while longer, even after returning to actual reality the following day. He woke late in the morning, staring uncomprehendingly about for the fountain and pool of Paracosma. Slow comprehension dawned. How much? How much of last night's experience had been real? How much was the product of alcohol? Or had old Ludwig been right and there was no difference between reality and dream? Overall, I did find Pygmalion's Spectacles an enjoyable science fiction story, but it was especially interesting when considering some of the concepts outlined here and how close they are to modern day VR. We wear headsets similar in concept to the magical spectacles offered by Professor Ludwig, and various pieces of VR peripheral technology also try to mimic the senses of smell and touch as well as sight and sound, just as Professor Ludwig's invention does. The overall concept of VR that we have today is extremely close to that outlined in this short story. We are effectively trying to fool our senses to convince our brains that we are somewhere else, just as the spectacles did. And over time, the technology we use to do that will change too. Sometimes it can be a mistake to think of VR as a single piece of technology, a headset when in actual fact it's more of a concept which will use varying technologies over time. Perhaps there will be no headsets in the future, but rather brain-computer interfaces. But that's a video for another time. Either way, the concept of VR will probably remain very close to that outlined in Pygmalion's spectacles, in the sense that we will continue to manipulate our senses to achieve the goal of experiencing alternate realities to our own. I do recommend people reading Pygmalion Spectacles, it's only a very short story and it is definitely interesting to read. But that's pretty much it for this video, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Please consider picking up my science fiction virtual reality focused novel The Memory Engine, a light-hearted tongue-in-cheek adventure through the metaverse, available on Amazon Kindle, paperback and as an audible audiobook. Links in the description to this video.